Stan Gibalisco here. I am going to explain to you basically the configuration of a typical satellite communications antenna for amateur radio purposes. Um, in, a, in a ham radio satellite, generally speaking, there is a transponder which converts signals at a particular incoming frequency band to signals at a radically different and radically different in terms of frequency outgoing band so the satellite transponder receives signals converts them to another frequency band and then retransmits them in this case what we're looking at is an example of a satellite communications antenna for ground-based stations uh, they're shown as seen from directly overhead and the antennas are assumed here to be aimed at the horizon so that we can get a good bird's eye view of the whole assembly. The downlink antenna is a receiving antenna for signals coming from the satellite and it's phased using a phasing harness in such a way uh, that these perpendicular sets of elements, these are Yagi antennas, long Yagis, oriented at right angles to each other and fed 90 degrees out of phase, thereby responding to circular polarization. And the same is true for the uplink antenna, which, as you can see from the shorter elements, operates on a higher frequency band in this particular example. And again, the two sets of Yagis perpendicular to each other are fed 90 degrees out of phase to produce circular polarization once again. The sense of the circular polarization both going down or coming down and going back up must match the polarization coming from in this case the downlink antenna the satellite and the uplink antenna must produce circularly polarized waves that go in the correct sense so that it matches the receiving antenna on the satellite. And by sense I mean either polarized circular going clockwise as the waves approach you or going counterclockwise as the waves approach you. This is the rotator assembly and attachment to the mast which you can't see here because it's a, a underneath the rotor and it goes straight down away from you so the the rotator assembly here uh, obscures the mast making the drawing a little simpler this rotator assembly can turn either in the horizontal plane or in the vertical plane so you can point it in any compass direction uh, that is generally called the azimuth rotator and then you can adjust the elevation of the antenna above the horizon from zero degrees that is pointed right at the horizon to 90 degrees pointed straight up so it's a pair of rotators one of them turns it around the compass and the other uh, points it up and down that's azimuth elevation rotator or as L uh, it's called uh, and by doing that you can aim these antennas directly at the satellite the thing is the satellite always moves in the sky so you have to keep changing these um, rotator positions the best way to communicate with a satellite or the most uh, the easiest way is when the satellite is at apogee its greatest distance from the earth so that it moves in the sky the most slowly even though it's farthest away at apogee it's easier to keep the antenna pointed in its direction when it's at perigee uh, and most satellites have a highly elongated orbit most amateur satellites do then the antenna moves very rapidly in the sky and requires complicated and rapid uh, changes in the rotator positions and it can be very difficult to keep the antenna pointed at the satellite. In the case of a geostationary satellite you get the best of both worlds because the satellite 
stays in the sky at, in the same place in the sky 24 hours a day seven days a week uh, and you can just set the antenna to be aimed at the satellite and then you don't need any rotators at all um, that's the uh, that's the best of all worlds the only problems occur when the satellite happens to pass in front of the Sun or I sh should I say the Sun or a highly a very noisy region of the Milky Way galaxy the center of the galaxy happens to be in line with the antenna although far more distant the noise from the galaxy center or the Sun can be picked up by your geostationary antenna or any antenna whenever a satellite passes in front of a noisy region in the sky and you might lose contact with this the satellite uh, I've had that happen with satellite television and satellite internet connections uh, with geostationary satellites for uh, maybe 30 minutes on certain days of the year you just couldn't use the thing and that will happen occasionally with almost any satellite system just one of the things that makes it all the more interesting and uh, all the more fun if you like complicated interesting things <laughs> Stan Jibalisco W1 GV Whiskey 1 Good Vibrations saying 73 which means best regards and so long which on my satellite communication system if I ever get one will obviously be CW and I'll end every contact with da 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 da